Hi there. My name is Colin Knapp, and I'm one of the pastors of this church, Pilgrim Congregational Church. Pilgrim is an open, affirming community in the United Church of Christ, and we gather together virtually, for now, every week to worship God and to share the love of Jesus Christ and to put our faith into action. We are in the season of Easter. Easter is a day, it is also a season. And in this season, we seek to find new and creative ways to put our faith into action, to explore what it means to celebrate God's new life among us and within us. I am glad that you are here. Without you, we would not be us. So let us worship God.
Good morning. I'm Cleo Enixon Hagen, and I am privileged to be the liturgist on this fourth Sunday of Easter. Easter and spring just seem to bring hope and new beginnings. What a week this has been. How have you experienced hope during this time? In the world outside our doors, we've enjoyed the blooming of redbud trees, forsythia, tulips, and even those dandelions. And then there were also a few snowflakes. Earth Day was Thursday, with hopeful signs that change is on the way. With so many taking up the challenge of saving the Earth, our President Biden called a climate summit, and he is on board to guide our country to tackle the work that's still needed to protect our planet. We experienced a collective sigh of relief with an actual conviction of a police officer for murder. We timidly dare to hope that this signals change. Vaccinations bring hope of again gathering with friends and gathering to worship. The stories we heard this morning of successful immigration lead us to hope that we may again become a country with open doors that welcomes the stranger. Today, in this Easter season, as we experience hope, may we also be open to hearing the challenge for each of us to be the change that's needed in our world. May we always remember that our hope is in the Lord, who is our shepherd, and who promises that we will be protected and cared for always. As we pray together, I will be sharing a prayer of love and healing for the earth offered by Howard Shapiro from Full Circle. Let us pray. O oh God of all names and beyond all names, I pray in great gratitude this holy day for love. Love raises the sun and greets me in each drop of water I drink, in each crumb of bread I taste, in each smile and tear I touch, in each child I meet. In a mantle of awe I stand enwrapped. My feet rest upon earth and my head meets the moon. O Holy One, our times are fraught with challenge. Our earth suffers climatic chaos. Men, women, and children suffer from wounds of conflict, droughts, floods, and crumbling economic systems. All manner of suffering and questions press into my soul. My small beating heart does not seem large enough. Yet daily it keeps expanding beyond body boundaries into compassion. Each morning love rises beyond a known horizon in the unknown day. Each morning hope beckons me into my stardust destiny. Each noontime grace feeds me with love. Each evening an invisible breath enfolds me in a shawl of mercy. O Holy One, who is love, hope, grace, and breath, transform our sadness and doubt into songs for life. We pray for our beloved planet and all brothers and sisters. May healing waters bathe the rivers and oceans. May small, deliberate actions grow seeds of earth justice. May one prophetic note of the smallest bird song courageously sung on a busy street at dawn inspire leaders to free their voices to speak for the common good and future generations. O oh God of all names and beyond all names, whose face is love, may I and we collectively be the face of transforming love. In this moment, in this day, in these times. Amen. And now let us join with Janine Bergen as we sing God of Grace and God of Glory. Oh, 
the good shepherd and knows our needs. God leads us into green pastures and beside still waters and sustains us when we are in trouble. But consumed by our own interests, we don't see God's presence, nor do we attend to our neighbor in need. Our God is merciful and eager to forgive. Confident in God's mercy, let us confess our sins before God and one another. Please join me in our unison prayer of confession. O oh God, you are the good shepherd who attends to our needs, but we fail to see your abundant life in our midst. We see only scarcity, our consumer culture has engaged upon us that we are not enough, and so we long for things that do not satisfy. Help us to see that we are your beloved children, created in your image, and help us live out of your love. Amen. The psalmist tells us that God's goodness and mercy will follow us all the days of our lives. Friends, believe this good news. Believe that God's mercy is sure and that God's goodness will fill our lives and empower us to love God and our neighbor as ourselves. Amen. Peace be with you from the sanctuary of Pilgrim Church. Peace be with you, pilgrims. Now I'm two shots down. Where are you? We're going to see each other soon. It's going to be wonderful. I miss you all. Love you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you from the Dale home to all our Pilgrim family. Peace be with you, pilgrims. I can't wait to get back in church. I have my shot. May God's peace be with you, pilgrims, today and every day. Peace, pilgrim. May justice continue to rain down like water. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. There is peace, peace be with you. Our Old Testament reading today is the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. 
He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. This morning I have a couple sounds that I want you to guess. And here is the first one. Tell me what you think it is. If you guess piano, you're right. Let's see it again and see if you were correct. Okay, and here is our second sound. What do you think? If you guess guitar, you are correct. Let's take a look. Okay, now our next two are a little different. It's someone that you know giving us a special message. See if you can decide who it is. Follow me. Let's hear it one more time. Follow me. If you get guess Pastor Gloria, you are correct. Now we have one more special message and see if you can guess who's speaking in this one. Follow me. Let's hear it one more time. Follow me. If you guess Pastor Colin, you are correct. That was a little harder, wasn't it? when you're just hearing a person's voice and not seeing their face. So that brings us to our Bible story for today. It's about the Good Shepherd. Do you know that sheep are mentioned over 500 times in the Bible, more than any other animal? For instance, Moses took care of some sheep and also did a boy named David before he became king and he even protected his sheep from some lions and bears. You know, sheep are kind of a dirty animal. They get stickers stuck in their fur and they're not able to get that out by themselves. And they're not very good at direction. For instance, if they go down to the stream to drink, they can't find their way back or remember how they got there the next day. So they need some help. What do we call that person who takes care of sheep? That's right, a shepherd. The sheep really need the shepherd to help them stay clean, to show them where the food and water are, to keep them out of trouble, and keep them safe from wild animals. Well, in our scripture today from John 10, specifically verse 14, Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. Who are the sheep he's talking about? Well, us, of course, he knows each and every one of us, and Jesus wants us to know him and to realize that just like the shepherd takes care of the sheep, Jesus will be with us, keep us safe from harm and trouble. Jesus is our good shepherd. He will help us and guide us and keep us safe and teach us always. Let us pray. God, again, we thank you for Jesus. We are thankful that he is the good shepherd who helps us as we lose our direction or when we need help. May we always follow the good shepherd. Amen. Our second scripture reading comes from the New Testament, the epistle of 1 John. I'll be reading from the NRSV. 
We know love by this, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses help? Little children, let us love, not in word or speech, but in truth and action. And by this we will know that we are from the truth and will reassure our hearts before him whenever our hearts condemn us. For God is greater than our hearts and he knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have boldness before God and we receive from him whatever we ask because we obey his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment that we should believe in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another just as he has commanded us. All who obey his commandments abide in him, and he abides in them. And by this we know that he abides in us by the Spirit that he has given us. This is a word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. This past week, I have been reflecting a lot on the past year. I, I wanted to let you all know that I'm honored to be your pastor, one of your pastors, and that most days I find gratitude bubbling up within me. So thank you for this. I'm glad to be here. That's not to say that being here has been easy or always fun, because that's not true. This has been an incredibly difficult and hard year. Everything about our lives, everything about perhaps what it means to practice ministry in a public setting has changed from time to time, Gloria and I have spoken about the need to recognize this time as a kairos time. Kairos is a biblical term. It is a moment in time when the conditions are right for a decisive and important action. It is like a window that is opened. It is a moment of conversion Transformation is it is a time when things could shift and change suddenly. Perhaps this is the most important Kairos moment of all the Kairos moments from this past year, the one that we are in right now. We should not let it slip by because we need transformation. We need change and action. We need to take advantage of this little window that we are in. We make plans for times such as these. This is a critical moment when, when we should go all in, put all our chips on the table, use the leverage we have. I am hopeful, hopefully not naive, just hopeful, that this could be a time of healing. We need healing because we live in a society dominated by fear, designed for hate. It's all around us. I don't even have to really give examples. You already know what I'm talking about. You feel it. We all feel it. The way it creeps into all the the little crevices of our lives. We don't see one another with reverence, mutuality. We don't see one another's belovedness, your sacredness. We instead tend to view one another in one of two ways. The first way is as a commodity an asset, 
something that can be given a monetary valuation, something that is useful for something else that I should try to benefit from in our ever-present quest to attain more wealth and power, sex and status. We have diminished people. This is the language of capitalism. It is not particularly Christian. It is contemptible. The second way, if not as a commodity, we tend to view one another as a threat, as less than human. And so we believe we are justified in dealing with one another through manipulation, force, and if necessary, then by all means, violence. By embracing our fear of one another, by justifying hate, we have allowed injustice and brokenness and despair to rule us. It is this cyclical pattern that I see so many of us in our community struggling against. We long to be people of hope, but this story of the marketplace, this story of fear, it pervades us. It's exhausting. And so we need transformation. This is what we need to be healed from. This is what could begin to change in this Kairos moment. We could live out the character of our true story that isn't grounded in fear, but rather is a grand story of love. To live out the story of love will compel us to face our fears, that's true, because to live with love is risky, even dangerous. Which leads me to a question. What is love, anyway? If it's so important, we might need to know what it is. The Bible actually has a lot to say about love. So does our tradition. C.S. Lewis, the Oxford English professor from the last century, author of the Narnia series, which so many of us have cherished and, and read and then given to our children to read, he says that there are four types of love. Affection, friendship, those two come from Aristotle, erotic love, and love of God. It is this last one, the love of God, translated from the Greek word agape that we find so much in the New Testament. This is the word that the author of the letter of 1 John speaks of here today, agape. It is the highest form of love, the pinnacle, the top of the pyramid. What is this love? This love is laying down one's life for another. It is not merely a kind word or a, a mushy sentiment. This is reserved for affection and eros. Love is what we see in the incarnation. It is the taking on of flesh and embracing our life of pain and hardship and suffering and oppression and even death. Love is going to the margins when you don't have to. Love is speaking up when it is more convenient to stay silent. Love is giving something really important away and not expecting anything in return. Love is naming injustice when it would be safer to just keep walking by. Love is not for one's own benefit, but for another. And love is what we see in God, at least the God that we talk about here at Pilgrim. If this is to be a moment of healing, then love is what will heal us. The epistle of 1 John is 
really a letter of encouragement to a group of people who desperately need to remember what this love even looks like. From the larger context of the letter, we see that the original recipients are being oppressed by outsiders. What is their response to a world that so openly hates them? Many of us hearing the sound of my voice this morning know exactly what this feels like. We know what it feels like to be excluded. We know what it feels like to be hated, to be damned. We know the pain. We're just trying to be a people who follow Jesus, who take these words of Jesus seriously, who live out another way because we know that hatred takes us nowhere but to more violence. We're just trying to be a people who remember and, and hold on to love. The author of this epistle shows us what this love looks like. Love is self-sacrifice. This is what God does for us. God sacrifices God's self for us, does what we cannot do for ourselves, heals us of our woundedness so that we can live anew. That's the promise. This type of love is extraordinary. It's captivating, but it takes shape in our lives in ordinary and simple ways. The text says that if you are in a position to help, if you have the world's goods, if you are in a position to help and you see a brother or a sister in need, you should help them. It's pretty simple, actually. Laying down your life, in verse 16, as the author writes, normally, for most of us, nearly all of the time, will not literally mean laying down our life. It might be as simple as just giving someone your time or driving someone to their vaccine appointment. It could be as simple as looking for the good in another person rather than pointing out their deficiencies. It could mean just stopping to really pray for someone in the middle of your already very busy day. Not just saying that you'll pray, but really praying. Sending a text, calling someone that you know is going through a rough patch, Laying down your life means not living for yourself. It means letting love reorientate your priorities. Letting God's desires for the world replace your own vision, your own perfect little plan. It means really giving yourself to this love. That might be the biggest challenge for us as contemporary people, just acknowledging that this love is worth it, that it is worth your life, that this story of love is better than a story of fear, even though it means that things will change. And you probably won't have the power, you won't be in control to make those changes. Even in that circumstance, love is still better than fear. What is this love? Love is an action. 
This is what verse 18 makes excruciatingly clear. Let us love not in word or speech, but in truth and action. In this moment of potential healing, love and action might be listening to the stories of people of color in our nation who are living in constant disappointment and anger and fear. Love and action could mean believing people when they speak to you about what life in America is really like. Love and action could mean confronting your own stuff, your own complicity in a system designed to separate and oppress. I've got stuff too. I'm right there with you. Love and action means being honest with yourself. Love and action means holding people accountable for the very real harm they have caused. It is more than a special, warm, fuzzy feeling. It is an orientation of our hearts. It is a way of life. If the love of God is in us, then it compels us to act it out. When we begin to practice this love, when we act with this love, you'll notice that it begins to free you from fear. It starts to open you up a little bit, frees us from bitterness and hatred. It allows us to begin to breathe and over time heal. The quickest way to strengthen one's faith, to feel God's loving presence, to know that there is, in fact, another way, is to practice it, to put it into motion. Give it a try without knowing what will happen next. Put it into action. Just see what happens, how that feels. John Wesley, the 18th century theologian and pastor, the founder of the Methodist Church, early in his youth, wasn't a person of faith. He wanted to be a person of faith, but he wasn't. And so he said, I will act as though I have faith. I will do the things that faithful people do, and over time, I will have faith. That's kind of how love works, too. We act out love. And over time, we find this love flourishing within us. When we do so, we will come to know that this love is not our own. It is not merely some self-improvement project or the sum total of our collective effort. It is God's love which persists in us, which permeates this world, this world that was made in love and claimed for love, and is in fact even now, yes, by faith, moving towards love. That this moment of healing we are actually in is a part of an expansive plan set in motion from the beginning and that the Spirit's work of healing is relentless. It cannot be stopped or contained. And therefore, we should eagerly join in this movement. God's justice and peace will prevail. God's love comes despite us. It also comes through us. May it come through us today. In the name of the triune God, amen.
prepares the table for me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup, my cup. I invite you now to join me in prayer. You are welcome to share your prayer joys and concerns online during this service in the chat, remembering that those will be viewable by the public. Alternatively, you can submit prayers privately through our website or contact a deacon for healing prayer by phone. Today's prayer is responsive. When I say, Lord, hear our prayer, I invite you to respond and in your love answer. Please pray with me. Maker of heaven and earth, the beauty of creation reveals your glory and the gifts of abundance that you have given to us. Thank you for creating us in your image. Thank you for the precious gift of life on this magnificent planet. Grant us a reverent attitude towards the natural world, God, which you have made the source of so much inspiration, healing, and joy. Guide us in the work of healing our environment, that this earthly home may nourish your creation for generations to come. You call us to care for the world around us, just as you care for us, and we pray that you guide us in our efforts to be good stewards. God, we pray that we might deeply care, that we might care for all of creation, that we might care for the trees, the land, the deserts, the forests, the parks, the people who walk on this earth and who are your beloved children. Teach us, Lord, to truly and rightly do this in our actions, in our hearts, in our thoughts, in our words, in how we love, in when we speak, and in erasing our silence. Lord, hear our prayer, and in your love, answer. Lord, we pray for a more equitable world, for the people whom you love so deeply and infinitely. 
This week, as we saw that Derek Chauvin was convicted of the murder of George Floyd, we felt for a moment a small piece of justice in a country and a world where black and brown bodies are so violently mistreated. We know that one decision will not change everything and that your children will continue to live in fear as so many more of your children are mercilessly mistreated and killed. May we care for our siblings by fighting for equity. May we feel called to do these things every single day, every day until justice rolls down like an ever flowing stream. That stream that you created and which we are called to treasure and love. We pray that we all may continue to struggle to make a difference and to see justice roll down. Lord, hear our prayer and in your love answer. God, these are anxious times. Many of us wrestle with fears that overwhelm us, choices that bewilder us, challenges that feel insurmountable. We grieve the seemingly endless waves of mass shootings in our country. The shooting in the Indianapolis FedEx Center last week was the city's third mass shooting this year. Since then, there have been nine mass shootings across the country, two in Michigan and two in Louisiana, one in Ohio, Wisconsin, Alabama, Texas, and Georgia. In the past week, with multiple fatalities. This past weekend in Chicago, 24 people were shot, three fatally. Lord, we grieve and pray for all of these families and communities and for ourselves, because even if we haven't personally lost someone yet to gun violence, we are all affected by this public health crisis. We pray for a way forward, a way to end this seemingly endless cycle of violence. Lord, hear our prayer and in your love answer. We turn our hearts and minds now to those many needs, to the things in your world that are not as they should be. We lift up people living in war-torn lands, refugees and migrants seeking safety, leaders striving to govern wisely, and all who mourn the loss of loved ones. Something in our current system is not working, God. We long, we yearn for the day to come when there will be no more names that must be said. But today we say the names of Adam Toledo, Duante Wright, and Makia Bryant. We ask for your presence with their families and with the traumatized communities that grieve their untimely, violent deaths. Please comfort them, Lord, so that all your children know your grace and mercy. And God, we know that this is a difficult time to be a police officer. Be present with, guide, and protect our fellow citizens who have answered this call to serve their communities. Empower them to do so according to the highest values of their calling, honor, integrity, service, accountability, and courage. Lord, hear our prayer, and in your love, answer. We pray, O oh Lord, for those in our family, our church, our community, and our world that you bring to our hearts and minds at this time, and we hold them up to you. Bless those we name before you now, out loud, or in the silence of our hearts. We ask for prayers of healing, comfort, and encouragement for Janine's mom, Virginia, and others who are struggling with their health. We pray for grace, patience, and encouragement for parents, teachers, and students as they work to bring a successful close to a most unusual and stressful school year.
We pray for comfort and peace for those grieving the loss of a loved one. And we lift up our joys as well. We say thank you and amen for the signs of spring and our increasing ability to get outside and enjoy the gifts of nature. Help us to see and feel your presence embodied throughout creation. Lord, hear our prayers and in your love answer. God, as we celebrate Earth Day all around the world, may we remember to continually fight for justice for our Earth and to continually remember that you have gifted us with this beautiful creation. May you remind us of our connection to your creation and to all of the creatures and people who are a part of it. We pray these and all things in the name of Christ who taught us to pray together each in the words most familiar to us. Our Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This is the time in our service when we offer to God a portion of the blessings that we have been given. You are invited to give to Pilgrim Congregational Church using any of these methods. Online at www.pilgrimoakpark.org. Select Give from the menu and then click the Give to the Pilgrim button. Via the Tithely app downloaded from your phone's app store. Text the word Give to 833-721. 1098. You can mail a check. At this time, we ask that you give generously as you are able. of love and compassion, take these gifts and use them to bring about a more just and loving world. In your name beyond all names. Amen. I have several announcements to share with you as we bring our service today to a close. 
Next Saturday, May 2nd, is the annual Crop Hunger Walk. The format has been modified, but the need is greater than ever, and there are multiple ways that you can help. Our youth and young adults are conducting a non-perishable food drive for Beyond Hunger, and you'll be able to uh, bring your food to Pilgrim next Saturday uh, at one o'clock. We'll be collecting on the front lawn, and so even if you're not walking, please consider stopping by to donate canned or box foods and to take a selfie with your Pilgrim friends. You can drop off food donations in advance, if you'd like, uh, starting next week in the church parlor on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday during office hours, which are 9 to 4 p.m. At 1.30, you're invited to warm up for the crop walk and invigorate your soul with laughing yoga, led by our very own Lynn O'Donnell. And then at 2 p.m., the crop walk begins. Our route is shorter than usual. The map can be found on our Pilgrim website. And all registration for the walk and fundraising is online. Our team site, Pilgrim Congregational Oak Park, is set up and ready for you to join the team, either as a walker or a financial supporter. If you would like to walk, please wear your old crop walk t-shirt if you have one, and you can contact the church office to make arrangements to pick up signs and crop hunger walk masks, etc. Next Sunday, we are excited to welcome Reverend Kirsten Peachy as our leader in adult enrichment at 9 a.m. In addition to being a member of Pilgrim, Kirsten is the Director of Faith and Health Partnerships for Advocate Aurora Health. She works with our faith communities to support their role as promoters of health and healing through training, consultation, resource linking, etc. And she'll be joining us for a conversation about transitioning to the new post-pandemic normal. More information and the Zoom link can be found on our website. You are all invited and encouraged to send in new Passing the Peace videos. Take advantage of the nice weather to record yourself from a new spot. The videos are a lovely way for us to see each other as we patiently wait to regather. So please keep sending them uh, to Delina. We enjoy looking at them each week. There will not be Tuesday evening prayer this week, but there will be virtual fellowship hour today, immediately following worship. The Zoom link is on the website. And now, please join Marcella Richardson in singing the closing hymn, I Come to the Garden Alone. Still on the roses and the 
And now my sisters and brothers receive this benediction. May the peace of God, the love of Jesus Christ, and the joy of God's Spirit go with you now. May you be a people of courage. May you be a people of peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Amen. Right.